Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to enter and exit cars using animations. So previously I released a video on just entering and exiting cars and quite a common request on that video was with animations. So that's what I'm going to be going over today and I just want to preface this by saying that this is a very very basic version and it doesn't look that great and the main reason being is it's free. So I'm using a free car model with free animations. Obviously that gives you a lot less customizable stuff and a lot less really to work with so it's not going to look as good. But I'll show you what we've managed to create today. So let me hit play, get in, I'll walk up to the car, press E, you'll see we've got this basic animation for getting into the car. Obviously there's no door opening but we do have that animation. We're now in the car driving about, we can obviously drive with the driving animation in here. Then when we stop, let's just stop here. We can press E to get out with this animation as well. Again, it's opening a door which doesn't actually open. Same with closing, we get out and we're now here. So obviously this does look okay, so it would work quite well for some very basic games which you want to make. So again, it does work. We do have animations, you can get in and out of the car as well as driving it. It just obviously doesn't look as good as you might want for a bigger game, especially a more professional game, at which point you'd want to pay for your own animations and probably car model as well or obviously create it yourself. But like I say, this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you want to do is you obviously want to import your animations that you're going to be using. Now I've just got these ones off of mixmo.com. However, I believe I have edited them a slightly a little bit as well. So I'll leave a link in the description down below to where you can download these animations as well, specifically for what I've done to them. But again, the originals are from Mixmo that I've retitled over and edited them slightly. Once you've done that, we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, go down to Input, and we're going to create a new action mapping, naming this Interact. And this is just so we can get in and out of the car, and I'm going to set this to be the E key. So the benefit of action mappings is you can set this to any key you like, for example E or F. You can also set it up for different consoles as well as rebinding it. So once you've done that, we're going to close this, and now we also want to create a blueprint interface. And that is so we have a nice and efficient way of again interacting with our car. So let's right click, go to blueprints, go to blueprint interface, and I'm just going to name this one interact interface, like so, opening it up straight away. Now this is a read only function. So if you want to understand more about what this is and what this means and again how blueprint interfaces work, I do have a video linked in the description down below where I go over that in a lot more detail. So I'm just going to name this one interact like so and I'm going to add an input on here called interactor and this is just so we have a reference to the player that is trying to interact with the car so we can then use that to actually modify the player and play the animations and all the stuff we need. And this wants to be a character object reference like so compile, save, and we can close this as that's all we need to do. Next, to finish up the interacting, we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person PP, blueprints, third person character. In here, we're gonna right click, search for the interact action event we just created, like so. So whenever we press the key we set up, it will fire this off. And this wants to find the car or anything else to interact with and then interact with it. So we're going to right click and get overlapping actors. So again, just get all the actors which are around us that we are overlapping, which we want to then be able to interact with. The class filter I'm going to set as actor. However, if you want this to just be for the car, you can obviously set it to car there if you wanted. Out of overlapping actors, we're going to get a for each loop with break, making sure it does have the with break as well. Out of the array element, we're going to get a does implement interface. And what this does is it's going to check the array element here. So whatever we're overlapping, it's going to check to see if it implements an interface. The interface, we want it to be the interact interface we just created like so. So we only want to try and interact with actors which have this interact interface. Otherwise, there's no point because we don't want to interact with them. As this is a Boolean return value, we want to hold down B, left click to get a branch with that being a condition and connecting this into the loop body. So it's going to actually test to see if this is true or false, so it does or doesn't have the interface. If it doesn't, we don't want to do anything, and that will then just go on to the next item in the array. But if we do, so true, we want to actually interact with this. So we're going to drag out of array element and search for interact, and we want the interact message there. And this is going to fire off the read-only function within our interact interface. 
and we can then modify this function to be specific for each individual actor, which we'll obviously do for the car. Now the interactor, we're just going to get a reference to self, like so, so this player is the one interacting with the car. And out of this, we're also gonna go into the break of the for each loop with break, because we found something we want to interact with, so we don't want to try and interact with anything else. For example, if there's two cars near each other, you only want to interact with one, not both, so you only try to get into one, not into both of them. So that's why we have that there. So we'll compile, save, and we can close this, as that is also all we need to do in there. Next, let's start setting up the car. So you see I have this car here, this is just from the start content as well. So if you don't have this, what you can do is add new in the content browser, add feature or content pack, and I'm just using the vehicle. You can use vehicle advanced if you want, however I'm just using the vehicle in this specific example. And again, the animations which I've edited are kind of catered towards this car as well. So just hit add to project there. Once you've got it, we can go to vehicle BP, sedan, and then the sedan BP, which we have here. Don't worry about this error. This is just because I deleted the stuff which I had when I was showing you the code earlier. So you've obviously got all of this code here for controlling the car, but we again want to be able to get in and out of it. So firstly, we're gonna to go to the viewport to again, start setting everything up, which we want. So first things first, I'm gonna add a component with it being a box collision. And this is gonna be the area the player needs to be in in order to actually get into and interact with the car. So I want this to only be on this side of the car near the steering wheel. So the player has to be on the correct side in the correct area in order to actually interact with and open the car. So I'm just gonna put it here and scale it up to be around about this size as I think that's gonna be good for me. So again, the player needs to be within this box in order to interact with the car. You can obviously set this up to be however you want, so wherever, how big, all that good stuff, but this is gonna be good for me. Next, we're gonna set a few references. Now these aren't gonna be variables, these are gonna be skeletal meshes. So we're gonna add another component, adding a skeletal mesh, and I'm gonna call this one enter mesh or enter reference. So wherever this is, is where the player needs to be standing in order to enter the car. Now that sounds like the box collision, but basically the, the player needs to be within this box collision, and when they interact, they'll get moved to this enter mesh. So I'm gonna set the skeletal mesh to be on my mannequin, like so. And for the animation, just as a reference, I'm going to use animation asset, with the asset being entering car, the animation which I already have. Now we can see where we want it to be. So I'm gonna use the values which I found earlier, which you can also use again if you're using the same animations and the same car. So for me, the location on the X is 30, on the Y it's minus 230, and on the Z it's 100. So on the Z it's 100 because for some reason it does get moved down slightly, I'm not entirely too sure why, it might be something to do with the collisions, but I've tried to counteract it, doesn't seem to work, so the easiest solution was to just move the animations up, and this seemed to work great. And I also need to rotate it on the Z by 90 degrees, just because the actual orientation is this way, but the way that Epic Games or whoever made this content pack has created it is the car is facing the other direction. So when we get a reference to this later on, the rotation is gonna be slightly different. So we're just fixing that here as well, instead of having to do calculations later on. What we also want to do is scroll down until we find hidden in game, tick that. This means that the player cannot see it in the game. It is purely just here as a reference for us, the developers to know about and see. The player will have no idea that this even exists. That also means we don't want any collision, but it shouldn't have any by default anyway. Next, I'm going to duplicate this, so Control c Control v F2 to rename it, and I'm gonna name this one Sitting Mesh. So this is obviously gonna be where the player is sitting. And so we're gonna scroll back up and use Animation Asset with this one being Driving. So again, we can see where we want it to be. Now the location for me, I found was 20 on the X, minus 40 on the Y, and again, 100 on the Z, with this time being a rotation of just zero on the Z, as you can see like that there. So we're gonna compile and save that like so. So now we have all of our references set up for our car. So we've got the references of where we need to be to get in, where we need to be to sit down and then also get out, and also where we need to be in order to be able to get in. So I hope all of that makes sense. Next, we're gonna go over to the event graph and then what we're actually gonna do is minimize this and start creating those animations. So if we go to content, 
this is where your animations might be or just go to the folder where you have them and you'll see we do already have the animations but we want them to be animation montages so I'm going to select all of them right click create create and a montage and I'm also going to open all of them up as you can see like so now what we want to do is just make some minor changes so I'm going to start with the driving montage first I'm just going to pause it what I'm going to do is change the blend in time to be zero just so it snaps into place perfectly as the way I've got it set up is they will automatically be in the same place so I do not need them to blend then we're also going to untick enable auto blend out so once this montage finishes it's not going to blend back out to just be the normal player's character movement it will stay in this animation montage which is obviously what we want so the player is going to be constantly driving in this animation we'll save and close that now the entering car montage is going to be very similar we don't need to change the blend in and out times but we are just going to untick enable auto blend out so again it doesn't blend out save close exiting car montage is again just untick enable auto blend out like so we can save and close that like this now in order to actually use these animation montages that we've just created what we need to do is open up our animation blueprint so for me that's mannequin animations third person and mvp and if we go to the anim graph which i have here you'll notice we've got our state machine going straight into the output pose what we need to do is add a slot default slot just to enable the use of animation montages we can compile save that and that should now allow us to use the animation montages for entering exiting and driving our car so we can close the animation blueprint and go back to our car bp that we have here so i think that'll be it for this video as when i've recorded it and finished editing it's quite a lengthy one so i'm just going to split this into two so this one obviously come out today and the next part We'll be going over actually entering and exiting the vehicle and putting all of this stuff together that we've just created so obviously we've just done the animations and we're going to put all that together to actually enter and exit the vehicle in the next video which will be coming out in two days time on the day after next as per my usual videos so it will be the next video that gets uploaded so i hope that's all right that this is split into two it's just it was about half an hour long so i thought it's best to just split it up into two and this was the best place to do that so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.